98 GTI. I'm going to do a timing belt. I haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, so I'm just going to record it because I don't remember if I have one or not for the ABA engine. I probably do, but I'll do some more talking this time around. When doing timing belt on these, you don't have to do the water pump at the same time. You can always do the water pump at a later time. Um, I've got a video on how to do it without touching the timing belt. You could leave everything in place and only remove the front half of the water pump instead of the whole housing. Uh, but you can run into problems doing that and again in order to do that you have to take off the timing belt. So it's up to you. If you're doing a timing belt, you can pull the front half of the pump. But um, I usually do the water pump separately uh, when it fails, either bearing noise or leaking. Okay, so stay tuned. We're going to do timing belts here. Headlamp battery is dead already. And there is a special tool. It hooks right on here. You take a big pry bar. This makes it nice and easy. But again, not needed. You can use a screwdriver. Or somebody put a clamp that's interfering with the other clamp. You gotta think about stuff. I would have put this on this side. Oh well. Well, maybe I'll do that. Lots of oil here coming from the PCB system. PCB heater. And this is the later style that has the vacuum hose here. So any oil that goes through here gets trapped in here and there is vacuum that pulls the oil in and burns it. And this is the wrong style of hose. It's starting to swell and get soft. Hundred fifty thousand kilometers. No, it's not. What is that? That's in miles. Hundred fifty thousand miles. That can't be right. Wow, everything's still looking original. I gotta change these batteries. Uh, top dead center right here. Six millimeter. <laughs> Say if the uh, pulley is stuck, use a pry bar and gently wiggle. Wow, that's stuck pretty good. 
supposed to separate. Wow, I've never had one stick like that before. Serpentine belt goes above the power steering. If you're familiar with one of, with any of my other videos, timing belt, the uh, crank pulley, there's the uh, pulley hole is going to be at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock and you can see the little nub here and the little uh, bolt there so this should be top dead center now for number one and the dimple is over here at the seven o'clock position on the mark fours it's over at the uh, five o'clock position on some of them you have to move the water pump pulley to remove this cover and not on this one though so we can leave the water pump pulley where it is it's five millimeter up here and there's a 10 millimeter here uh, it looks like it's missing a nut somebody didn't install it uh, oh yeah and I forgot to take off the tensioner roller we usually take off the roller from the top uh, it can be done from down here as well 13 millimeter Once it's loose, you have to hold the tensioner roller. And sometimes you just got to work blind. So I know you can't see anything, but you obviously know what I'm doing. I'm removing the bolt. And like I said, you have to push against the tensioner. Otherwise, it's just going to freewheel. Okay, once that's out of the way, you can pull the cover off. You have to be careful. Sometimes there are spacer washers in behind here uh, and here. So if you don't see them, sometimes what can happen, because one of them sits right here, it'll fall onto the sprocket and then you put the belt on and you can have that washer get caught in the timing belt and chew up the timing belt so be careful now is the time to inspect the seals intermediate and crank they both both look good cam seals okay you can see top dead center top dead center so the uh, the uh, sprocket down here that's lined up the way I showed you earlier at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, uh, the, the sprocket must be good uh, if for whatever reason this is not a top dead center, either the uh, belt was installed incorrectly with, with the uh, cam being out of time top dead center or what happens if you, this is top dead center but this cam sprocket is pointing wrong and you have to look at the timing mark over at the flywheel. Uh, right now, there should be a top dead center mark that's visible on the flywheel. And yes, there is. It's perfectly at zero. I'll zoom in so you can see it. If for instance, that mark is not visible when the uh, crank sprocket is lined up at 12 and 6, then uh, what you do is you turn the engine until you see the 
tub that center mark at the flywheel. Uh, once that's lined up, re have another look at the crank sprocket. If those bolt holes are not sitting at 12 and 6, then you have to take that sprocket off because the uh, keyway is most likely worn and the sprocket is moving. So this is a used sprocket. And this is the key here. This one's looking pretty good. What happens is if the, when the bolt comes loose over time, this will wear and then the sprocket will start to knock and uh, it'll wear the key. In the worst case, it'll, it'll wear it right off and then it'll freewheel and then the engine will have valve contact issues. So uh, if this is not at six, 12 and 6 when you have your flywheel at top dead center, then you have to look at this key here, but always replace the bolt. It's a single use stretch bolt. Okay, so with everything at top dead center, we can take off the timing belt. This is the later style with the hydraulic tensioner. We're gonna replace this. We're just gonna go back to the old style single roller. Uh, these are problematic and they can fail. Yes, it's a better design over engineered, but uh, it's better to go back to the old style. 10 millimeter. sure to catch washers if there are any. You don't want to have those sitting in, on top of the crank pulley or crank sprocket and then come off when you start the engine. And two, two 10 millimeters for the uh, hydraulic tensioner. One at the top. There's one at the bottom here. You'll see better on your car. Once they're loose, you can just use your fingers. And since we're not going to install the hydraulic tensioner, you can chuck, you get rid of those bolts. You don't need them. Same with this tensioner nut and washer. We're not going to need that because we're going to convert to the old style, and the old style uses a big stud, not a little one. Okay, so once all of this is loose, you can uh, you get enough slack in the belt and you just pull it off. Keep an eye on the intermediate shaft gear uh, in case it moves too much. Come on. Gonna need a 17 to remove this stock stud. So we're not gonna need this stud anymore. This washer we're not gonna need. The nut we're not gonna need. And these two bolts we're not gonna need. To make sure you're not moving the uh, intermediate shaft, it's, good, uh, it's a good idea to uh, remove the distributor cap. Number one is over here, and number three, and number four, and number two. And as you can see, number one is still pointing at, there's a little notch here. You want to have the middle of the rotor pointing right at the middle of this. or not at the middle, at this notch. If it happens to not be pointing there, all you have to do is move the 
intermediate shaft pulley and you can see the distributor moving so all you do is rotate this until this points at number one so as you can see just because I pulled the belt off the crank moved a little bit so all you do is move it back to the top dead center 6 and 12 and uh, usually there's a dimple let me just find the dimple it's not visible usually there's a dimple that points to right to the to the corner here um, you can always make a mark before you pull the pull uh, the belts off but um, in this case like I said all you got to do is look at the rotor and then turn this until the rotor points to number one 